Hey guys, and welcome to Functional Print Friday. So what I have on the bench this week is a 3D printed television, and it's super tiny. No, really, it's here. Uh, oh, you know what, you can't see it, it's behind the, uh, the Mitutoyo caliper box. Oh, sorry, I meant behind the tape measure. No, the other tape measure. There it is. All right, so here it is, guys, and uh, yeah, it's that small. In fact, here's a quarter, uh, just to give you a sense of scale. I'm touching the TV with the quarter. So this is 3D printed in SLS nylon. Now, no, I don't have a machine that does SLS nylon. They actually provide you the enclosure with the kit and the quality on it is very good. There is quite a bit of detail uh, in the print. Hopefully you can see that. I mean, you can make out the layer lines uh, and sort of a little bit of, uh, I don't know if you'd call it almost like kind of dithering. It look, kind of looks like a little bit of dithering in the uh, in the print. I don't know if that's part of the process or if that was done on purpose in the in the model. Uh, but it truly does look good and it's quite sturdy being nylon. And uh, again they supply this with the kit. You, you get I think there's four or five total pieces to the kit. It's not terribly difficult to install. It's a great project um, for younger kids. Uh, it's got a, uh, a circuit board with a screen on the front uh, the battery sits directly behind that, and then the board that is rearmost is the uh, the micro SD card uh, interface board, and then there's a speaker that sits uh, behind that. And you can see the micro SD card here on the bottom. Again, it gives you a sense of scale. That's a that's a micro SD card in there, and those are you know like the size of my pinky fingernail. So this thing is tiny. Does it work? Yes, it actually works. So if we hit this, this guy will turn on and we actually have functional buttons as well. This one changes our channel. Um, when I say channel, it's basically just whatever videos you put on the micro SD card in here. They provide you a tool uh, to convert the, the videos. And this side is our volume control, so we can turn this up. It's so, it's so small, it's hard to... It's hard to even operate. Uh, it is actually, it's really difficult to press the buttons because the thing is so small. But that's okay because they also supply a remote control. And the remote control did not include a 3D printed case. In comparison to the TV, I guess it's actually quite large. Um, but I found someone had designed a, a case that fits the circuit board for the, uh, the remote control. I'll link that down below uh, to the person that designed that. And uh, my daughter chose the filament for this. I probably would have gone with something with a bit more contrast. Um, but this is the, uh, the white marble PLA. It does look good. Uh, I probably just would have gone with a darker color, but this is for her. So, and we have the same control on here, I think. Let's see, I think we can actually turn it on and off. Yep. We can change the channel. Oh, hey, look, it's an episode of Functional Print Friday. How'd that get on there? So as cool as this thing is, I think one of the flaws uh, that it has is it's quite delicate, right? It's obviously incredibly small, but on top of that, we've got these legs at the bottom that really do give it a cool look, sort of an old classic TV look, uh, but it makes it rather fragile. And even being an SLS nylon, um, you know, these are going to snap off if we pop this in a book bag or, you know, in a box or something else and it knocks against something else. So you guessed it, that is... Uh, today's print. It's kind of a twofer. You get to see the TV itself, which is in fact 3D printed. And I love seeing, um, you know, sort of smaller vendors using 3D prints as part of their manufacturing process for smaller runs. We saw that with the, the Touch DRO on the milling machine as well. But what I wanted to do was design a case for this uh, to make this much easier for her to, you know, take to school, show her friends, or to carry around with her. And I figured, hey, it'd be cool if the remote fit in as well. So let me get you back out to a wider shot. All right, so here's the two parts that I wanted to be able to fit into a case, and I figured if I orient them kind of like this, I could get it fairly small. You know, I want this to be durable. I want this to be able to have like heavy stuff knocking around into it in a book bag, or be able to drop it on the floor and not worry about it, but I still wanted it to be able to fit in your pocket. So I figured if I orient the two items like this, I should be able to get pretty small. I also wanted it to be easy to use, you know, not something with like tricky hinges and latches and stuff like that. So here is what I came up with. And this is the bottom. And you notice a thread here on the sides. You can probably already guess how the top is going to work. Um, and it's fairly simple in design. The remote just fits in there. 
And this is inset, uh, this area here, and then we have a lip up here so that we can reach in with our thumb and forefinger and get these items out. The TV itself does have some protrusions on the back, uh, just as part of that model. Um, and I think it also makes it easy to slide this back off as this guy, I think, oh, you know what? Actually, it comes off. I can show you guys inside. Uh, you can see the lithium ion battery in there, as well as that small speaker. And then underneath that are those two circuit boards. Actually, I think I said that the battery was sandwiched in between the two. Uh, that's not correct. Um, it looks like we have the, uh, the, the small LCD and circuit board, the circuit board then with the micro SD interface, and then the battery is at the back. And we'll pop this back in place. So this has a recess on the bottom to be able to accommodate these protrusions on the back. And this shape here is at just the right height so that rather than having the legs hit down here at the bottom, we're hitting against this small. You see how that protrudes there a little bit further from the rest of the bottom of the TV? Maybe easier there in that view. So I wanted to hit against that, not to have any force on these legs. So if this guy's dropped, um, you know, the legs don't take that impact. So when this drops in place, uh, hopefully you can see that. If I push this, I'm pushing this as far in this direction as I can go and the legs don't hit. Uh, it's actually that, uh, that piece of the, the, the back of the bottom of the TV. And we have a little bit of play in here, just enough so that we can easily reach in and grab this guy out, you know, that it doesn't get kind of stuck in there. And let me grab the top. So here's the top for this guy, and you notice the graphic on the top. This was actually part of the packing material that the, uh, the kit came in. It's got kind of a neat sort of hologram look to it. Uh, what I did was I just cut this out with scissors and then I designed an inset in the lid so this guy actually does sit below the surface so that uh, it's not even flush. It actually sits all the way down in there so that we don't get this guy kind of all scratched up. Um, it also keeps it in place rather than trying to have, you know, kind of this glued down and, and edges that want to come up. Uh, there's a little bit of hot glue underneath here, but it actually kind of sits right into the edges and holds itself in. And this is threaded on the inside. So this just screws right together. And maybe we got a little bit of movement in there, but it's not going anywhere. And this guy is plenty durable. Actually, I feel like I could probably throw this across the room like a hockey puck, and I don't think, I don't think the case is going to be damaged, and I don't think the TV would be damaged either. Uh, we have a little bit of side-to-side -side play, but this lid comes down. The actual the the surface of the lid tightens down against uh, this top face here but it's designed as such that the TV only sits, I think maybe one millimeter below that. So the TV can only move in one millimeter in this direction um, when this guy is screwed in, but we're not actually tightening that lid down onto the TV uh, itself and squeezing it. So pretty simple one this week. Uh, this was a really fun kit to put together with my daughter. Uh, these, this is not sponsored. I paid, uh, I paid for this TV kit. I wanna say it was like 75 bucks. I will link it below. Um, it did initially seem a little bit pricey, but my daughter loves stuff that is tiny and, you know, just kind of putting together projects like this. Uh, so I went for it anyway, but now that I've had the opportunity to use it, uh, and see it in real life, it's, it's totally worth it. It's, it's really cool. Um, yeah, there's devices out there that have, you know, screens that are that small. I mean, look at an Apple watch, uh, but just seeing it in a kit form like this, you know, something you can put together. I mean, this thing is so small, uh, it would look, you know, perfect in like, uh, I don't know, like a little diorama or a, or a model of a, of a living room or something. It would be really cool to see a functional TV in there. So, so as always, thanks for hanging out in the shop with me this week. I realize this one was not as exciting as some of the stuff we've done, but hey, this is what I made this week and uh, my daughter was really happy with it and I wanted to share it with you guys. So uh, if you enjoyed this, hit that like button. If you like functional prints and you want to see more of this, uh, check out the other videos in the, in the, in the channel. And uh, hit that subscribe button because I do a new video every single Friday. And guys, if you do, see you next Friday.